So this morning we are so privileged and honored to have my friend, Reverend Nyakio Kamau. She's been here before. Amen. And as you have heard, she has a long history. She's been a pastor at Sitam for over 10 years. Being a pastor for 10 years, you can see when she started chasing demons. Amen. And uh, so from uh, this year, the Lord has blessed you. She's the president and the founder of Bethel House Ministries in Kenya. Amen. Praise the Lord. And she runs a prayer ministry down called Monday Night Prayers from 10 p.m. in Kenya. Amen. Kenyan time. So she's online. She's a wife to Alan Kamau who have been here before. Amen. In this church. And she's a mother of three. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, without wasting time, please put your hands together and help me to welcome our, part, our guest, Reverend Yakio, all the way from Kenya. Thank you, Pastor, uh, for the amazing invitation to just come and be in fellowship with you guys here, right here in California. I'm delighted, uh, as you have heard, uh, I come from Kenya I'm in a season when I'm visiting the U.S., um, with permission from my husband and my children to just come and minister and to just minister among the churches here in the U.S. So thank you so much for having me. I honor you. I honor you, uh, Pastor Mary, uh, to together with your family, great host. I'm enjoying my time just being hosted by these guys. I, I don't know whether my auntie came today. She was supposed to be here. Maybe she'll be coming later. Oh, you're right there. Good to see you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Allow me to also recognize Eric. Eric was my youth leader. Good to see you right there. Amen. Amen. Did you just want to wave, Eric? You can just wave. You can just wave. Amen. Amen. This guy helped us to grow in the Lord. Amen. 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 As you can see, the seed is still there. In Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly turn to your Bibles to the book of John chapter 5. Today I want to talk about It's Your Time. It's Your Time. It's a story of the man who had been on the pool Bethesda for over 38 years. 38 years. It turn to your Bibles to the book of John. You can rise up to your feet as we read God's word together. Amen. It's you that I it's you that I see. Don't you think I'm on the morning at the center? It's you that I see 
and he walked. Let's read verse 13. Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may take your seats in the presence of God. So today I'm speaking to us on a, on a topic I have entitled, um, It's Your Time. It's Your Time. Jesus goes into the pool of Bethesda and, and right here, you can go a bit quiet and then we'll pick it up later, just a lower the volume. Um, he, he goes to the pool of Bethesda and there he meets this man who had been a paralytic for 38 years. I don't want to ask in this place who is 38 years old. Uh, some of us are 20 plus a couple of years of experience. Somebody Ajay, Pastor from Kaunera. But let me tell you, 38 years is a long time. So he may not have been at the pool for the 38 years, but the Bible says that he had been at the pool for a very long time. And this is what used to happen at the pool of Bethesda, is that once a year, there was a stirring of the waters, and the person who got into the pool first received their healing. And so Jesus passes by, and this is what the Bible says, that at the pool were many who were lame, were many who were invalids, were many who were blind and paralyzed. But Jesus came for this one. And I came to tell you today that God can leave a multitude of people and step into your situation and pick you up and say, I have come for you because when it is your time, Nobody can resist you in the name of Jesus. And so he walks into the pool and she says, I have come for this. Come on, say, I am the one God has come for today. I am the one. So he walks in the midst of all these people. How many know that you can be in the midst of a group of people? People that you went to, to primary school with. The other day, back home, I met a lady and she tells me, we were together in primary school. When I looked at her, I said, do you want to tell me I am this old? Maybe it's because I could not see myself. But she looks old. But I said, it has been the masses of God that have preserved me in this situation and in this season. Because God picked me up and has given me the grace to minister the word of God. If I told you some of you know the primary school I went to, that primary school, that God can lift up somebody and give him a charge in love from Ninanita. Jesus. 
So today, as we look at that portion of scripture, we are reminded, we are reminded today that God is well able, that God is well able to choose you and to separate you for himself. And this is the amazing thing you find in that scripture. The Bible says that Jesus saw and he knew. You see, the things that Jesus sees in your life, nobody has a clue. It could even be your closest companion or even your spouse. They have no clue what you're going through. But Jesus sees. And how many you know that when Jesus sees, and then he says, and he knew that he had been in that position for that long. You see, nothing takes God by surprise because he's the all-knowing God. And he saw him and says, I saw where you are. I see you right where you are. And he had to go out of his way to that pool to bring out and to touch this man in the name of Jesus. May you know today that God sees your situation. Man may not see. Man may not appreciate. Man may not applaud you. But God in heaven sees you. But God in heaven appreciates you what you do for him in the name of Jesus. How many know that yes some of us will stand on this platform but wherever Jesus name. I want to give you a minute to do that in Jesus name. Father, we call forth our destiny. 
destiny help us. Reba zika taraba shanda. Reba kandebo zika taraba yande. Robo zoko torobo shanda raba kaya. Reba kandebo zika taraba. Reba zoko torobo shanda. Reba kandebo siya. My God, we call for our help us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call for everyone assigned to my life. Even in this season of my life. Over my brother. Over my sister. We call them forth. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My laptop is not working, but I'll speak as God puts it in my heart. Where does my help come from? My help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And how many know that we have a helper in the name of the Holy Spirit? The blessed Holy Spirit. Jesus said that I will not leave you as orphans, but when I go, it is expedient that I go, but I will not leave you as help as orphans. I will send you the blessed Holy Spirit. That when you're walking on the streets of California, you're saying, Holy Spirit, you are my helper. Holy Spirit, you are my counselor. Holy Spirit, you are my source of helper. In the name of Jesus, we have a helper in the Holy Spirit. And I pray for you that you will not ignore the person of the Holy Spirit. Because at times we push him aside. As we do our shift, we put him aside. In the business of looking for the dollar, we have no time for the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will say, I am here. I want you to come. I want you to receive me. I want you to walk with me. In the name of Jesus, we are not without help. Come on, declare I receive the help of the Holy Spirit.
shift in the course of the week. You lose that connection. But I declare today that in the name of Jesus, that you remain connected to God. You remain connected to the throne room of God. That we may usher. There are things that God would like to tell you. But how many know, even when you're talking to someone and they're too busy, they don't give you attention, they never get what you're saying. Yeah. You even don't want to tell them because they never give you attention anyway. Have you ever tried to talk like, for example, I'm talking to Pastor Mary and she's looking that way and I'm here trying to engage. You know that's how we do. And the Holy Spirit is saying, come, just spend. You know that Jesus would ask the disciples in Gethsemane, wouldn't you spend? Let's go. 
mark of God upon your life. And how many know God has said in his word in the book of Malachi that there will be a distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous and the wicked, between they that serve God and they that don't serve him. There's a mark of distinction upon the children of God. I want you to lay your hands on your head and declare that in the name of Jesus that God is releasing his mark of distinction upon your life. In the name of Jesus, God is causing you to be distinct. God is causing you to arise. God is causing you to be different. Come on, I need to hear you opening your mouth and declaring today that God is doing a new work in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we glorify your name. That is a mark of, oh God, there is a mark of God in our lives. There is a mark of God in our lives. The anointing to do exploits for Jesus. The anointing to do exploits for Jesus. The anointing to do exploits for Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. And we honor you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And this is what happens. When, 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 when God visits you, he says, rise up, take your mat, and walk. He says, rise up, take your mat, and go. This is what Jesus would say to us today. Rise up, take your mat, and go. Why? Because his position and location was being changed at this point. He no longer needed that man. If he left it there, he would have had the temptation to go back and check on his command. You know, it could be like those two, two shares that you invest in. You know, you're going to check what happened to my mat. Who took over my mat? And you see, let me tell you, what happens is that when we're going through situations, you get comfortable with the problem you're going through. Recently, I broke my leg, and I'm telling you, the privileges of having a plaster and walking in crutches, the day it was about time to remove the, the plaster and put down the crutches, I was feeling, wow, how will I be passing the queue? There I go. Because I got a news, I had privileges. I went to a place, I went to a place, and they did have room. Then I said, but look at me. I have a crutch. How will I walk? And because of that, a door opened for me. I, I, I was enjoying that season of that problem. You get used to it. It becomes your comfort zone. It becomes a thing that you love, the thing that you go back to. This, that it's your default setting that you go back to because this is what you're used to. But God is saying, no, 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 no. Take up your mind and walk. And God is changing your location, spiritual location. You're no longer at the pool of Bethesda needing healing. You are not the healed of the Lord. You see, some of us, when God changes our location, some people try to look for us when we were 10 years ago or 20 years ago. We moved in the Lord. Hiya. Jehovah changed us. We had an encounter with God. You keep looking for me. Maybe someone was a prostitute and people will keep saying, Oh, sure. The way that one was a prostitute. Ah, ah. Their location changed because they had an encounter with God and their lives are not the same again. Some people have a way of labeling us and saying, Look at that one. Is that so and so? Is it this what they used to do? They also looked at Jesus and said, He is a carpenter's son. What good can come out of Nazareth? But I came to tell you that something good can come out of you. For as long as you have an encounter with Jesus and you allow God to change your life. God is in the business of changing our stories. My story has changed. My story has changed. My location has changed. My address has changed. I am no longer the widow. The Bible says that Jesus, God for the Father, becomes the husband to the widow. He is the father to the fatherless. But some people will keep saying, look at her.
We are not. When you enter the realm of the spirit, yes. that is where you will know. Who is who? There are people you will not even see where they are. In the realm of the spirit, is not here. They are nowhere to be seen. Here you look like you're together. But I have decided that God, I'm going to arise in the realm of the spirit. I'm going to become a general in the kingdom. I'm going to become a general in the house of God. Because God is in the business of leading his children in Jesus. Then come on, tell the neighbor, you're rising, you're rising, you're rising, you're rising. You are rising from the mighty clay. God is setting your feet upon the rock of our salvation. Even our Lord Jesus Christ. When it was the time for the man of God who had been a cripple for over 30 years, Jesus showed up. I don't know how long you've been trusting God for, but I came to tell you today that it is your time and it is your time. It is your time and it is your turn. You see, he's, this is what he says. That everybody else passes me. It had never been my turn for 38 years. But Jesus says, you don't even need the pool. You need the pool. My God. When Jesus shows up, he changes the equation. Hey, My God. When Jesus showed up in my life, he changed the equation. Yes. Hiya! He changes your equation because he's God. He is God. So I came to tell you today, it's your time. It is your time. In Jesus' name. Do you want to turn to God in prayer as we turn to him this morning? In Jesus' name, this afternoon. Hallelujah. And this is what I want you to pray. This is what I want you to trust God for today. That while well, another star at calling Jesus, do not pass me by in Jesus' name. That God, when he's visiting others, that in this season you will experience a mighty visitation of God in your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, declare this day in the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we glorify your name as you visited with this man. God, we thank you that favor will locate us in Jesus' name. That the favor of God will locate us. That we no longer say like this invalid, that I don't know who healed me. But this morning we know you. We know you, Jesus, our Redeemer. We know you, our Father. We know you, our Savior. We know you, the one who paid the price for us, the one who has redeemed us. We know you. We know that you are able. God, we have tested on the faithfulness of God in our lives. My God, just being here is a sign of your faithfulness. Oh God, is evidence of your faithfulness in our lives. And today we thank you. Today we honor you. Today we glorify your name. Father, we repent where we have all oh God wallowed in self pity parties in the name of Jesus. We repent where we have questions. They are moving our lives. So that we repent and pray today that God, would you connect us to yourself? Would you connect us to yourself in the name of Jesus? We thank you, Father. We honor you today. We glorify your name, oh God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Even as we pray this day, as we pray this day, and every head is bowed and and, and we're looking to Jesus. Maybe you're here and you're saying, I've waited for too long. Maybe you're even waiting for your papers. Maybe you're even trusting God for your family, for your marriage, for your children. A child who has gone wayward and you're saying, I've waited for long. I just need God to intervene in my life. And if you're there, you can lift up your hand and we're going to pray with you this day. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I can see a few hands going up. Um, Pastor, is it wisdom to ask them to come in and social distance here? Kindly come to the front and we pray for you in the name of Jesus. Okay. Worship team, you can come and join me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. As you come, just lift up your hands to God. Just lift up your hands to Jesus and tell him, God, I'm, I've been waiting. God is faithful. As he brought this word today, he has a plan. He has a purpose. 
He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans which are for good and not for evil. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you today. We exalt your name today. Thank you for these ones who have come to this altar. As they have come trusting you. As they have come believing. Oh God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, oh God. You will intervene in their lives in Jesus' name. Come on, if you're seated there, just stretch your hands towards them as we pray for them. Just intercede for them for their breakthrough that they've been trusting God for. For the breakthrough that they've been trusting God for in the name of Jesus. That God will intervene in their lives. That God will intervene in their situations. That God will intervene in the name of Jesus. Come on, fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the honor and the finisher of your failure. He's the honor and the finisher. Wall of water, wall of water, wall of water.